<clears throat> okay, so I wanted to share um, uh, something about how I was talking about the smoke of the cosmos. And um, they were, you know, they, they had told me about me being born from a volcano or the ash, or I can liken it to being born of the ash of a volcano. Now, when I think of that, it's like cremation. Okay, the body burns, and then you're left with ashes. Okay, uh, that's like the resin. And it can be looked at as either uh, waste. But we can also look at it like all the it's like the concentration, the concentrated material that has all good stuff as well, like a concentrated form of a bigger body. And that it's and that it's all usable um, energy. And they were talking about, uh, they said you're moving from the energy that you confined to. Uh, it's like when you fine tune to understand a certain energy, you can imagine some different energy. Um, it's kind of like, you know, E equals MC squared, I mean... An equation can be written in any way, but you, you can also, once you understand one thing, you can also imagine something more than that. Because the universe is, is endless and timeless. So if that is so, then of course all the other constructs are, are as well. It's all about imagining and looking, uh, imagining past that. So they were telling me that the energy that I'm moving into or through is uh, it's something called uh, synergy, or I don't know if I talked about this in my other video. I may have uh, synergy or synergy, or uh, I, w I said uh, ash energy, like ash energy, and <laughs> they were like, "Yes, it's it's you know, look up the word and you'll understand." So when I looked it up. Uh, centers, uh, it's S-I-N-T-E-R, you know, center or centers, and what that is, if what I understand is right, is like the slag, the slag off of a metal piece, and what I picture in my mind is like welding, when you weld something, um, you have this slag, so you sort of like a masonry, or a masoner, or a blacksmith, you know, you, you hit the hammer on it, and it sort of releases the extra stuff. It's called slag. Um, what we're doing is, we are realizing that everything is reusable. Everything is useful. So we can actually take all that slag that we see as, we used to see maybe as waste product, a byproduct of a creation, and we can actually take all that byproduct, <coughs> and smelt it down, make it pliable, to create whatever we want. And they said that that's, that's what we are doing. <laughs> um, and lately I've been, uh, I, wrote, I wrote out the word centers, and I've been honing in on words and how you can place different letters in different places and I look at the outsides and I look at the middle and I try to you know use that construct as other constructs and I say okay well they have the same beginning and the same ending okay so it's like and they had been talking to me about the past and the future coming in the middle and being the same thing so I'm like hmm I wonder if that's more information I can check out so I was like okay I'm really into the science part so I put S squared <laughs> And it's like putting the two together. <clears throat> and uh, I, I also find other similarities of words that they give me that also show that. Like I can look at S squared as being uh, 
like a, a super science, a superman, or a spirit science, um, or a sweet solution. Now, I didn't really understand sweet solution. I mean, I can understand the concept of, of uh, using honey uh, to attract more bees than using, um, you know, bitterness or something. But also what can be realized is that you can take in bitterness and you can create that into something very sweet. So I think I realized this <coughs> when I, uh, it was a couple of nights ago, I was taking a walk outside at night and I noticed that there was like a lot of vapor all around me and I'm so happy when I'm around all of that mist because it allows the light to be seen from the street lights and it's so pretty because it's like the lights of the street like the street lights actually have an aura you know it emanates everywhere and I think that's so awesome because it reminds me of the cosmos which also reminds me that when they said you gotta look at it differently because it's all the unfolding nature of the grand awesome design and I'm like hmm maybe I'm in the cosmos right now and I'm just starting to realize that what we see is only a small piece and the more we uncover the more we're gonna realize that we're like traveling through the cosmos <clears throat> and lately I haven't really been hungry and I thought about uh, I think there's a story in the Bible about how I think it was Jesus somebody <laughs> I guess it doesn't matter uh, the story is is what's important the meaning it's like someone walked through uh, the desert for a very long time and they didn't eat anything they only ate the manna and I was like hmm like they didn't eat anything really I mean like we conceptualize eating food so I was like you know I, I would go a long time without food and I I've been that's how I was as a child and I never thought about food like I don't really remember food being like a big issue like a big thought um, so when I think about the manna and the story behind that it's like they had everything they needed around them and they realized that everything was useful so they could actually take in even just the air that they breathe and use take in their cells took in that and was like they could make it in anything they wanted and you're totally self-sufficient because you're using everything around you because you know it's useful um it's like perfect recycle recyclation uh it's all a cycle and you're just using it and creating whatever you want to experience from it and when I looked up the word mana I think it said something about I think I have it up here actually uh, it just I looked up mana and it said uh, it says Yeah, it says sometimes or archaically spelled uh, M-A-N-A or M-A-N-N-A -N -A, is an edible substance that, according to the Bible and the Quran, God provided for the Israelites during their, their travels in the desert. So when I looked at that definition, I was like, okay, well, what I'm picturing and thinking seems to sync up. And... Uh, I remember reading something about hmm, there was something about how it described the color. It described the color as being like a white. Yeah, it says man is described as being white. And when I thought of white, I thought about how I I said I I see the air around us as being like this. Um, this plasma, this white corpuscle, these 
like if we were to take a microscope version of white bl blood cells or something and and seeing it in in our sky it's like that's what manna is it's it's using that cytoplasm that's even in a cell it's everything that surrounds me everything that surrounds us everything that surrounds everything within the cell and they're using it and then and then putting it back in the system and then taking back in and creating whatever you want putting it back in the system and I thought that was really cool that I'm actually experiencing something that is written in something so long ago and then remembering oh yeah I remember that a story a long time ago talked about not needing to eat because they were already in all the food that they needed and I was like wow that's really cool and then on my way back when I went uh, back to my house I went inside and I was like hmm I really want some ice cream and I was like I don't really I was like I really want ice cream I want the taste of it I was like I don't really need it you know and then spirit was like look if it makes you happy what's important is your cells want you to be happy you want to be happy you want to please your buddies your cell bodies and they want to please you so don't worry about uh, whether or not you need it just if you want it enjoy it so I was like hey you're right I want some ice cream so let's go get some ice cream so I went to the little corner store down the street I got a uh, Caramel. I love caramel. I've always loved caramel. And I don't know why I stopped eating caramel. I just, I don't know. I guess you just change. But I really was wanting some caramel. So I got some caramel vanilla ice cream something. Came back. And I started eating it. And I was like so happy with the flavor. And I felt like all my cells fizz up again, you know. And, and Spirit was like, see, they know that you're happy. And that makes them happy. It's not about what you're doing or what you're eating or anything. It's how you think about it. And you know that you you want it, even though you don't need it, you want it. Because you find the beauty and the love in pleasing the taste buds, your cell buddies. And that's that's good. That's okay. You're, you're meant to experience your cells because your cells want to experience your world as well. It's like a give-give, you know? <clears throat> you know, it's like not it's like constantly thinking that you can't experience something is like you're now rejecting your cells want and, and need to uh, understand you more and, and they want to experience your world just like you want to experience their world um, <clears throat> so then uh, it was yesterday I was taking a walk and I was checking out this little river and I'm watching like how the water moves through each other and everything and I was coughing and now every time I cough a little bit because it doesn't hurt my throat before it was hurting my throat because I was rejecting it I thought it was something not good but now that I've accepted the coughing it's like it feels almost like a a lubrication a very uh, smooth it feels really good which is awesome and when I coughed I got a little bit so I could kind of taste it right here and it tasted l like good it tasted like a serum like a sweet serum or something like not totally sweet but it was a flavor and I remember thinking wow like that tasted good and they were like you see when you show your cells something that you love they take that in and then they can they are now producing that loving happy feeling and then you can tell your body will tell you that you are listening to more than just what you want it's what all your little cell buddies want too so now they can uh, glorify you know they can get excited that you listen uh, <coughs> And then they listen by sending you back <coughs> this other message, the same message, basically. And I was like, wow, that's really cool that 
I can put anything into my system because I love it because I want to experience that I know I don't need to but I want to and and wanting is really just your cells yourself uh, and even your outside world is really just a part of maybe an, another human like us and it's maybe the other human is experiencing something very sweet and then that's sent down and then I hear the message which is really your cell's message too but it's yours and all you're doing is just feeding each other all of the love and, and enjoyment that you get out of experiencing yourself and your environment and I think that it's really cool that the synergy you know is looking at everything that we thought was the bottom of the barrel maybe that we didn't see as useful is actually being is actually so concentrated now that everything that we held for later everything that we put in our mind pockets is like all coming back now it's all coming back because we're remembering that it's all useful and the more we remember where we came from and what's possible the more we explore that the more the, we have so much saved up because we just held it we held on to it and we put it somewhere else thinking it wasn't ours and it's just waiting to come out and grant us everything we've ever desired or wanted is simply always there we just gotta grab it and try it out anything is possible I mean everything that I'm that I'm doing as a as one bot one little piece of this grander design everything that I am doing is like totally not at all what I thought somewhere in the middle of my childhood in this moment <laughs> that that path somewhere right here I am totally looking at it differently and I'm experiencing probably what I already knew the moment I stepped into my own mother's womb was that everything is perfect a baby is inside of this solution and they breathe it in and they give it back and they breathe it in and it's like you know uh, we can liken it I mean it was all useful then why would we even think it wasn't useful now it doesn't even make sense in science and it's like I'm wondering if we are in I mean we can liken it to being in a womb and we're breathing in amniotic fluid in a sense and we kept pushing away and separating separatizing separating the placenta you know and I'm not saying we gotta eat placentas <laughs> I mean, some cultures do that because they know there's a lot of nutrients in it. But it's like, if we can liken it to this being our amniotic fluid and the placenta being in everything and everywhere that we th might think as our own con old construct uh, of not being good, all that resin not being good, then what we realize is that it's all perfect and we were just saving it for later because it's like we had to take this journey of this duality of good and evil to realize that everything that we've all already had is everything that we need we just gotta recognize it that's it we just gotta remember it's all about the memories we gotta work through what we some something we lost we want to remember so bad because we know that it can be so much better than this because it is better than this it never went away we just thought it did we gotta get past our old mind construct and and really love I mean this is how we appreciate it so much 
I think it's beautiful that we can that we even went through that thinking that we were barren reminds me of my tattoo I've got this tattoo here and the whole reason why I got it a long time ago was because no matter how dead and barren things might seem if you just if you just really look around you're gonna find the bluebird of happiness can be even in the darkest places and it's like I've got this tattoo this mark this symbol on my body to remind me that not only is it a concept that my brain knows it's like so much bigger than that and I'm only looking at one little picture of this pixelated TV screen of a movie that continuum continuously plays that it's real life <laughs> it doesn't have to be just a concept I can bring it to life just by imagining that it's absolutely possible yeah huh so uh, that's all I had to share right now uh, yeah <laughs> okay thank you for watching